Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to machine learning. In this video, we will be talking about ridge regression. Let's jump right in. So in the last videos, we talked about the Gaussian approach with the Bayesian inference of parameters. So now we can do instead of just the full Bayesian inference of parameters, we can just use the, uh, the term from our posteriori distribution, which maximizes our likelihood sorry, our likelihood times prior. So we don't care about the normalization constant, but we're just interested which parameters, theta, maximize our parameters. So which maximize the top part of our equation. So we can say that we are interested in the maximum of the likelihood, which is this one, times the prior. So if we just want the maximum a posteriori, we're just interested in the mean of the Gaussian because we know that if we propose a Gaussian for the likelihood and a Gaussian for the prior, our posteriori distribution, this one right here, will also be a prior uh, a Gaussian. And the maximum of our ga distribution in the Gaussian is the mean. So we can say that our maximum a posteriori is just the mean function or the mean that we derived in, here it is, in the last video. So if you're interested how we got it, this is the one right here. If we now say, well, we have a uniform prior, so we do not have a Gaussian as a prior, but just a uniform prior where each uh, value is equally likely, we say that our maximum a posteriori will at the end equal the maximum likelihood approach, the same that we had in the frequentist approach to regression. So we say that if our variance is goes to infinity, so it's just a diagonal matrix with very high values on the diagonal, and if we invert that, we will get a zero matrix here, a zero matrix here, it will cancel out the mu, and we will see that if we uh, multiply these terms together, we see that we get a phi transposed transposed phi to the power of minus one, phi transposed times y, and this is exactly the term that we got from the linear least squares. But now we can go one step further and not propose a uniform prior, but a zero mean Gaussian prior. So we're saying that we expect our parameters to be small and centered around zero. So this is where the zero mean and the ridge regression comes into play. So we say that our parameters, so the probability of our parameters given the data are proportionate to this is our likelihood and this is our prior where we are centered around the mean with a given variance. And now if we take the logarithm, we see that we have a the exponential e to this one times e to this one we take the logarithm, we get rid of our exponential, and we just take the term in the brackets. So we have a minus 2 divided by sigma, and these two terms minus 1 divided by 2 alpha squared of these two terms. So this is comes from here, and this part comes from there. So this is now the probability of our parameters given some data, and we want to maximize that. How do we maximize it? Well, we have, because we have a negative here, we need to minimize minimize these two terms. We have to choose our parameters, w, such that these two terms are as small as possible. So that's how we get to the error function. So the error function are just these two terms combined and we try to minimize those two terms. So this will give us the error function of our ridge regression. We can divide or multiply by sigma two, so we get a sigma two squared, and then use lambda as equal to sigma divided by alpha squared. And we see that we will get this lambda here. So how does this lambda influence our parameters? It will influence them in such a way that if we choose this lambda to be very, very high, we will push our parameters more and more to zero because we want to minimize this term. And if this lambda is very, very large, it will give a large effect to those parameters. But if lambda is equal to zero, we are just again at our least square solution. So what are the benefits? First one of all is the guarding against overfitting. 
We know that if we have a overfitted function in a regression, our parameters w are very, very large. So if we have a oscillation that looks like this, the parameters of that function, so the w's, they have to be very, very large. And we push them towards zero with our lambda. So even if we have complex models, we can train them on data sets that are limited and avoid overfitting. And of course, it helps with ill conditioning. So if we cannot invert this matrix, if we add some terms, we always will be able to invert that matrix. And it provides us a solution to a undetermined set of equations. So if n is, equal, is smaller than m. The problem of the ridge regression is that how do we choose this lambda? And this lambda again has to be entweder uh, guessed or it could be uh, determined with cross-validation. But this is again computationally very, very expensive. So let's summarize. We proposed a maximum a posteriori approach where we said we just care about the maximum of this term and this is actually the maximum of these two values multiplied. Then we said that this will be maximum at the mean and if we propose a uniform prior we will see that we will get the same values as our maximum likelihood approach and if we propose a zero mean that's where the ridge regression comes into play. We push our parameters with the help of our lambda, our lambda, more and more towards zero. And if we do that, we guard against overfitting and we are able to train complex models that have a low bias and still get a very low variance. So this is the most important part. We, it enables us to train complex models on smaller data sets. But the problem again is how do we get that lambda? This will be determined by, for example, cross-validation or just simply trial and error. I hope this video gave you a better understanding regarding the ridge regression. If you have any questions regarding the derivation or any tasks or examples, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very, very, sorry for that. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.